What is up everybody? It's Frenchie Powell with Permaculture Northeast bringing you guys a video on why I never ever buy fertilizer. All right, and to answer this question, we first need to start in nature. Now, this is the longer video. Some of you guys like that, some of you guys don't, but it's jam-packed with information, all right? So let's go along. Number one, we start in nature, and the reason is I'm in the woods right now, and it, we haven't had rain in a while now. It is full of greenery from tall trees to bushes to understory vegetation, and we got to ask ourselves the question, who goes through and fertilizes this all? You go outside your door, look at the roadside ditches, look at the hillsides. Everywhere, greenery, vegetation grows in abundance and nobody fertilizes it. All right, so that tells you that nature takes care of itself in a way and there's a method behind how it does it and we can mimic those methods. All right, so how does nature fertilize itself? If we can figure out that, we can figure out how to fertilize our gardens and our little farms, homesteads, farms, gardens, <laughs> the whole mix for free. All right, so what lessons do we learn from nature? All right, so look across here. Lesson number one is nature covers. It covers with leaves. It covers with sticks. It covers with logs. It covers with ground cover. Uh, you know, I guess pun un unintended, uh, pun intended, maybe. <laughs> okay, it covers everything. You don't look around and you don't see bare dirt, but many times when you look at someone's garden, that's all you see is dirt. And then eventually that dirt raises weeds. And so nature covers, and that functions all, does a whole lot of things. You know, it holds in water, it suppresses unwanted growth from vegetation, it does a lot of stuff. But nature covers, that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is a huge mistake I see everybody focused on fertilizer make. And that is nutrition, all right? We talk about nutrition with plants, generally with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And you're, you have your NPK ratio that we say corn needs this ratio, beans need this ratio, tomatoes need this ratio. And so we talk about nutrition with plants as though we know it all, all right? Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, that's like saying you need carbohydrates, protein, and fats to live. So all I'm going to feed you is bread, steak, and olive oil. That's all you get to eat. Well, how's your health going to be? Give it a month, give it two months, give it a year, give it a decade, if you live that long. <laughs> how would your health be if you ate those three things all the time? And so how is a plant's health when we force feed it these individual uh, elements solely for its health? All right, that's not all plants get. They get minerals, trace minerals, uh, micro trace nutrients from the soil, from nature's fertilizer that we never even foresaw them needing. And this would lead to a holistic health of your plants for their immune system, their growth, both in vegetation and in root structure, far beyond what we ourselves could understand or begin to try to guesstimate. So, that's lesson number two. Focus on feeding not really your plants, but focus on feeding your soil because that's where plants get their nutrients from. Right, if you're trying to feed your plants, you're doing the wrong thing. Feed your soil and you can grow anything. So lesson number one, cover. Lesson number two, feed your soil. So those are the lessons. Now, let's dive into how we practically do that. So let's say you buy a bag of fertilizer at the store. You open it up, you look inside, what does it look like? It's white. It kind of looks like salt. And the reason for that is plants need their nutrients, plants need their nutrients to be bound to a salt compound in order to uptake those nutrients. It gets down to the chemical charge on the root hairs and the chemical charge of the nutrients. They need it bound in something in order to uptake it. Now, when you add that, that saline solution to the soil, plants uptake it. They get really large, really lush because with that extra salt, they need to uptake more water. And so they kind of end up bloated. Um, in a crude sense. But anyway, when we talk about fertilizers, there's different types. There are quick, fast relief, uh, relief, <laughs> quick, fast release fertilizers that get nutrients to your plants right off the bat. And then there are slow, long-term fertilizers. And nature does the exact same thing. And we see it everywhere. So let's start large and work our way small with the longest, slowest release fertilizers that we can have, all the way down to the immediate plants need nutrients, 
let's get it to them. All right, so let's actually move over to the garden and see these different fertilizers in action. All right, so fertilizer number one is right here behind me, and that is rocks, all right? The longest, slowest term release fertilizer, longest release fertilizer for free is rocks. And the reason for that is they are literally solid minerals. All right, plants need minerals, and sometimes you will see rock dust sprinkled in a garden for that mineral content. Well, we know that rocks, when they break off or when they shear off, are sharp. But over time, they get smooth. They start to erode. They break down from wind, from rain, from, you know, anything crossing over them. From, I don't know, anytime you water your garden or uh, brush up against them. Rocks wear down, and that is a small amount of rock dust always being released throughout the year into your garden. Anytime water gets in there and it freezes and then thaws and then freezes and then thaws through winter, you're spreading fertilizer. And so rocky gardens can actually make for a really good garden as long as you're not rototilling or plowing because it is constantly having a source of minerals that's there and available for the plants. And so even if these things are underground, you're going to be having fungi and root hairs and root structures that are getting into this, that are breaking it up. And on the surface, you're having home for lichen and stuff like that to be accumulating nutrients and stuff like that. So anyway, rocks are going to be your number one for free fertilizer that is the slowest release fertilizer you can have. So have them around. You can even mulch an entire garden with just rocks and it will do fine. And yeah, so that's number one. So fertilizer number two, the log. All right, this is your second long-term release fertilizer. Breaks down faster than a rock. But it takes a long time. It takes a log time. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we've got logs, we've got sticks. Honestly, there are kind of path liners in our to-be food forest here. Got another log back there. And it, paths are a great place to place logs because they're not in an area you need to work to really kind of get in to plant your seeds. They can just sit there. They can mark an area. So even here we've got... I forget where that even came from uh, anymore, but we've got logs, all right, and they are here, they are idle, they're just sitting by, but like the rocks, anytime it rains, anytime, you know, weather events happen, they're leaching nutrients and fertilizing the soil, and so also underneath the logs, you're going to have a host of life, and so if we just uh, roll this over... You can just see a mass of fungi that are working on chewing up this log and breaking it down. I uh, don't see any wood lice or worms here, but I see some tiny, tiny ants have a home in this area. Sorry, guys. But uh, <laughs> it provides habitat. Uh, toads can sometimes, if you have a pile of logs, find that to be a good home, and they'll eat slugs and snails in your garden. So... Logs are your number two slow-release fertilizer that is absolutely free. Okay, after the log, we've got three more fertilizers right in this area. Let's take a look what they are. Okay, so we've got three different levels of releasing nutrients. We're going to start here with the slow one, and that is what we've been walking on. That is wood chips. And here you can tell why uh, this is a slow release in a sense, because you've got you know, chunks of wood and, you know, of all different sizes from large to tiny. And this stuff just breaks down magnificently over really kind of two and more years. The first year, it kind of sits there, uh, but afterwards it just gets better and better and better. And that stuff breaks down quicker, uh, gets nutrients to the soil faster and holds moisture wonderfully. Wood chips and any mulch really are like a sponge. And everything from this side down really, any of these finer mulches that we're gonna be talking about work well for holding moisture into the ground and above the soil and everything. So after wood chips, the next one's actually going to be sticks. Now you may not have, I mean, it's hard to not have wood chips around. You have to look for them. Sometimes, maybe your neighbors and people you know don't have a wood chipper, but there's always wood ch or tree trimming companies around that will have wood chips. We have back yonder 
uh, a pile of wood chips that they came and trimmed some of our trees that we had and just that were old and were a risk if like a high wind storm came through. But anyway, we kept the wood chips. So wood chips are great. We use them on our paths and around some of our uh, perennials. So here we've got a black currant. We've got some wood chips around the base of there with the hay as well. But anyway, wood chips are great. Sticks are along the same lines, but you can literally have sticks anywhere and everywhere. Just walk along under a tree and you will completely find as many sticks as you could want. These are all white pine sticks, but break off some sticks from bushes, break off maple twigs, break off any sticks, and of all the different sizes, they will break down a great medium-term release fertilizer that will work for your garden, adding that high carbon, high nutritional content to your soil. Then we've got spent hay. All right, this is really like faster when you talk about breaking down. Uh, straw actually would break down a little slower, but when we talk about feeding the soil, straw is nowhere near the nutritional content that hay has. People will say if you put in hay, you're putting in tons of uh, field seeds and everything. We do have grass in here, but it's because we have transformed this field into a food forest or to be food forest and uh, this grass is just coming up from that. It's not really sprouting any of its own seeds because it's too deep, too thick. We go down a ways till we even hit soil. Um, hay is great nutrition. You've got grasses, you've got wildflowers, you've got clover, all these things that are now dead or organic rotting material in your garden and every time, I keep repeating this, every time it rains, every time, you know, well yeah, every anytime a storm, so that's rain, uh, you are getting more and more nutrition leaching into your soil. And so spent hay is great, it's old hay, it's bad, it's no longer good for animals, uh, or even fresh hay if you bought it, that would work too for growing food using a resource that grows such abundantly as grass. Okay, so that was fertilizers three, or, yeah, rocks, logs, um, gosh, I'm forgetting. Rocks, logs, one, two, uh, mulch, sticks, and hay, three, four, five. So we are on number six, and that is weeds, all right? I don't care if you mulch, you will have small amounts of weeds, especially if you don't mulch, you're gonna have a ton of weeds. So grass is probably our biggest weed in a mulched garden. Um, we also have some English plantain, but this stuff here, that's fertilizer, all right? You've got high nitrogen fertilizer, grass is high as silica as well. Um, if you have like seed heads, that's nutrition there for the soil. Um, English plantain, that's nutrition for us, well, doesn't really taste good though. <laughs> um, so yeah, weeds are a fertilizer. So what we'll do is we'll take it, and we got some young bean plants here, and just put the weeds at the base of the plant. As it decomposes, as it breaks down, we're feeding our plants, and that's the goal. Well, okay, feeding our soil which feeds the microbes and the worms and everything, which then feed the plants. Feed your soil, feed your plants, all right? So weeds would be our number six fertilizer that is for free. Number seven, I'll tell you, we got all of it in here. Uh, number seven is right by that area. You might recognize these, especially if it's fall, and that's leaves, all right? Leaves are a good fertilizer, and, and I want you to think about this. Trees have roots that reach deep down into the soil, and they are taking up nutrients that surface plants don't reach. Nutrients, minerals, everything, and they are supercharging these elements into, you know, supercharging it with the sun into high in mineral content leaves. And at the end of the year, you know, they drop all this fertilizer at our feet. And what do we usually do? Well, we take our leaf blowers and we blow all this wonderful fertilizer into our neighbor's yard uh, or onto our neighbor's driveway. Uh, 
And then they do the exact same thing, and it's back and forth until finally one of us gets a bag, fills up this bag with tons of fertilizer, and puts it on the curbside to be taken away. Or we throw it back in the woods for nature to have it. Like, <laughs> use this stuff on your garden. It will feed miraculously. Honestly, if the biggest problem with leaves, and I will tell you this, the biggest problem with leaves is they blow away really easily. So if you put down leaves, put something on top of it, some sticks to hold them down, uh, a thin layer of hay to hold it down. Honestly, this stuff, I actually have a difficult time using it as mulch because it breaks down so quickly that I will lay it down in fall and by spring practically have no more mulch left because the soil organisms ate it through winter. And so this leaves break down remarkably quickly, very good quality soil that you get afterwards and it's amazing stuff. So leaves would be a highly recommended fertilizer and that is number seven. All right, number seven. All right, so I had to run inside to grab our next fertilizer and that is kitchen scraps. All right, kitchen scraps are a good way of using what would normally be a waste material as a fertilizer, all right? Now, you could do what's conventional and build yourself a fancy compost bin and get rid of your kitchen scraps that way, or if you've got communal, uh, communally, community composting system, you can get into that. Or you can do what I do and, uh, you know, <laughs> you may have checked out our other video already of why I no longer compost, and this is why. Take our mulched area full of other fertilizer. Pull it all back. Oh, camera tilted there. Lay down all of our kitchen scraps and cover it right. Camera keeps tilting, I'm sorry. Uh, laid down all of our kitchen scraps and covered it right back up. So I do that. I don't really have problems with rats or vermin. I get it. If you're in the urban setting or in suburbia, you might. All right. If that is the only food source around for those creatures, you might have some stuff digging around. Uh, if you're only worried about s certain critters, some sometimes you can do this. If you cover it with mulch, one, that eliminates most all of the odor because it's well aerated and the moisture in the mulch helps hold on to those uh, chemicals that cause the or that have the odor. Um, but you can also put sticks, logs, or rocks on top of where you bury your compost just to really kind of keep things from digging into it. But kitchen scraps, great fertilizer like everything else. If it rots, it feeds the soil. And when it feeds the soil, it'll feed your garden. All right, so for number nine, I'm going to flip this camera around and show you what that is. All right, so it is not news to many of you that lawns are about the ecological equivalent of a desert. All right, <laughs> when you just have grass, there's not much food for life. Um, you can change that if you have variety in your lawn, like clover, bees. Oh my gosh, bees love clover more than most anything else. When clover comes out, I don't see my honeybees go after any other flower except our cucumbers, ironically. But anyway, um, you can have wildflowers, dandelion growing in your lawn. That is wonderful. But one way to turn lawn into something of value is when you mow it, you can leave behind sections of... And we mowed a while ago, so this stuff's already starting to break down. But you can leave behind your lawn clippings. All right, if you bag them, you can lay them out and uh, dry them out a little bit. That would probably be best because when they're really fresh, they can get extremely hot because of the breaking down process. But grass clippings, you know, okay, so we enter our garden. We've got some cucumbers, some squash, an asparagus fern here. Uh, here's a little strawberry. So we'll just take grass clippings and put it at the base of the strawberry. And that functions as mulched hay. And, uh, speaking of the honeybees and what they go after, they like squashes as well as clover. Um, oh, it looks like our tomato fell down in some wind. Okay, so getting off topic, grass clippings, again, don't just bag it up and then mulch thick in your garden. 
with grass clippings because that will, let me turn the camera around here. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's yeah, okay. So, yeah, don't mulch thick with your grass clippings uh, because that stuff gets really hot. It is fresh, it is high in nitrogen, and that stuff breaks down super quickly, and you will see steam coming off, but it also cakes together really, really well. And it is hot. It can actually cake together so much that it can disrupt the uh, the flow of oxygen to the soil level. So you want to make sure that when you lay it down, uh, ideally you dry it out first. So honestly, instead of bagging it, if you wanted to blow it all into like what's called windrows uh, on your lawn and then come through and collect it from there, that would probably be best because that would allow it to dry out a little bit and then it would function as a good mulch for your garden. Uh, and it would break down well. It breaks down really well. It's in bite-sized pieces for all those worms and organisms. And that will feed your soil really well. And so that was number uh, 9. No? Yeah, 9. <laughs> so 10 and 11. Let's get into that. Okay, so number 10 and 11, the last two ways that we're talking about to fertilize your garden for free. I'm not going to show you because I don't have it on hand right now. Uh, but number 10, fast release, almost immediate fertilizer over the course of a couple weeks and a couple months is manure. All right, animal manure works really well. All right, not everybody has access to it. And it's said that, you know, especially if you're medicating animals, not to put that manure into uh, your garden, but you could compost that somewhere else that you're not putting on edible food crops because honestly, if you don't deal with your waste, somebody else will, okay? And so you're sending it off to a landfill or somewhere else and I don't think that's good. Um, that aside, manure, if, if you have uh, sheep or if you have horses or cows, that stuff, after it sits a little while, works great on a garden. You can put that stuff down in spring or in fall and grow things in it that will grow massive. I mean, plants love that stuff, all right? It's high in nitrogen, high in phosphorus, potassium, and all of the other uh, minerals that plants need. And so don't really try to get focused on exactly what nutritional profile uh, the manure has or what the plants need, just lay it out, let it sit, and generally things will balance out, if not in the first year, in a couple years. So lay it out, mix it with some other stuff if you want, some other weeds, uh, sticks, fertilizers, stuff like that, and you'll have a really good fertilizer that will work for what you're doing. Um, that's number 10. Number 11, the final one. All right, it's free, it's pee. All right, this may disgust some people. I have, I have no problems if you cut out the video here. But honestly, guys, let's, let's take a real look at this. Urine is a wonderful fertilizer. Um, and I say that because it's everywhere in nature. It's everywhere with people, all right? Surprise if that's a shock to you. Um... But if you look at the chemical profile of urine, it is very high in nitrogen. The number one ingredient is water, and it has nitrogen. It's got phosphorus, it's got potassium, and that's practically the fertilizers that you buy in the store in liquid form. All right? They've done studies in, uh, especially in sub-Saharan Africa, where they took corn, and the farmers there, they collected as a community um, their urine from the community, and the, they said at first this was really hard to get around, like, the stigma behind it. But after, you know, the first week or so, they, they started to warm up to it. Um, but, ooh, bad pun there. Anyway, ah, they, they used this on the corn, all right? They used manure, uh, duh, sorry, urine, on the corn, uh, and they found that the corn that received manure did better than no fertilizer and even did better than industrial fertilizer. Now add too much urine and the plants started to not do as well. 
And so you don't want to overdo it. If you give them too much urine, um, you can lead to aphid outbreaks and the plants might get stunted because the roots get burned with too much nitrogen. Um, but one time dose for a plant in a year or dilute it with water for a couple times doses. Uh, guys, especially like you can take a wee into a watering can and fill up the rest with water and then water your plants with it. That adds fertilizer to that water. And this is a method. The reason I would say specifically use this is it is immediate. You can take a plant that, and I don't care what garden you have, you're always going to have that one spot that doesn't do as well, or you're going to have those certain plants that don't take as well just because of the seed wasn't as good or something. But you're going to have some plants that aren't doing as well. If you take a watering can and have urine in it or whatnot, because you don't want to go out there and you know just start going on the plant unless you're in a really rural area and nobody's around uh but you know go in like a, a a dark bottle or like a bucket or a can or something and when you add this to that plant you can see that plant rebound again don't overdo it but give it some additional human fertilizer and that plant can rebound now this is free it's produced all the time throughout the year and we just take this fertilizer and we flush it down the toilet um, and then if you really look into the sustainability of the existing uh, sewer infrastructure that we have that leads to problems down the way all right I'm not going to get into that now but anyway if you're interested in more of that read Joe Jenkins the humanure handbook he focuses a lot on that that aside guys that is the number 11 free fertilizer that you have all of these reasons are, and all these examples are the reason that I no longer buy fertilizer myself and why you don't need to either. From any garden, from any level, if you have sand or if you have clay, you can just take organic matter of all these different types and of all these different breakdown speeds, put it on top of your garden, and that's going to break down. That's going to feed your soil in years' time you will have that black, that black rich compost that you envy from all the photos online and from all the videos of people who have been doing this for years. And your plants will grow like never before. Cover your soil, feed your soil, you will have to weed less, you will practically never water. We just got a large rain, everything's lush, but just yesterday we hadn't had rain for about a week and our lawn was starting to shrivel up, but our garden and everything that was mulched was fine. Do it, guys. Listen, take my advice, or don't if you don't feel like it. But anyway, that's Frenchie Powell with Permaculture Northeast coming to you guys with those ideas. Try them out. Let me know in the comments what worked, what didn't. If you like this video, like it. Subscribe to our channel for more good content like this and comment to help get this video out share it with your friends share it on the facebook pages that you are a part of let's get this stuff out there let's save people money and create a more sustainable future i love you guys i will catch you all around <laughs>